Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. Today, we're taking a quick look at Mech Warrior 5 Clans. So 2019's Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries was good. It, it just didn't quite live up to the original studios type of thing, but it was a really good attempt. And now in 2024, we're looking at the standalone sequel that's confusingly also called Mech Warrior 5, but like, make no mistake, because this is a pretty significant upgrade over the original game. It's essentially still the same game with the same engine, but with one major difference. Now there's a full like story campaign with lavish cutscenes and big elaborate missions that offer real genuine variety with set pieces, uh, story events, things that happen alongside, of course, all this important robot explosion stuff. If you spent any time with mercenaries, mostly bare bones missions there, this should be a big deal to you. Uh, for like a more casual mech warrior guy like us here, these additions are huge and immediately make the game a lot more intriguing. Call us simple, but you know, sometimes just smashing your toys together isn't enough. You need a compelling reason to do it. So uh, the story here, spoilers free, but try to follow along. You play as Jaden. He is a star leader in Clan Smoke Jaguar on a mission to retake Terra by invading the inner sphere worlds. So if you're not a hardcore mech head, then you will be confused by what's going on at first. But they're gonna throw a lot of words at you. Bloodhouse, Freeborn, Sibco, and you will have no idea what they're talking about at first. Essentially, it's making a story-based game about clans in the mech warrior universe, and it's an interesting idea that we really appreciate. It does a good job emphasizing what makes this universe unique because these guys are, these guys are weird. The characters are fairly broad, but the cutscene presentation is really good. This is a great looking game that does not feel shortchanged on story at all. It's an impressive achievement, especially compared to like what they were doing just five years ago in the much more simple mercenaries. Like the presentation is really stellar. Now, rather than having a free form campaign with lots of branching paths, this game is more guided and linear. The story is split up into chapters, and once you're through the prologue, that doubles as a slightly threadbare training course, then the game sets you up with a full squad of five mech warriors. There are two major parts of the game, okay? So the missions where you're stomping around with up to four other AI allies or co-op partners, and then all the in-between mission stuff that's pretty complex. There's the mech lab where you can outfit your mechs with new parts and weapons and attachments, a lab where you can spend scrap to research upgrades, the barracks uh, where you can like upgrade your team members using experience that you earn out in the field, and uh, you can go to a simulator to test out your mech setups, and then there's the merchant where you can buy new mechs and weapons or sell unused stuff. There's a, there's a lot to keep track here, and, and getting five mechs equipped seems like a daunting task at first, especially because the game barely takes any time to explain how the mech lab kind of works, but for the most part, the default loadouts on mechs is somewhat fine when you're starting out. So the game gives you plenty of time to kind of get accustomed to things before it starts asking you to really get into the nitty gritty in the lab. And the real highlight is the mech combat. It is really strong here. It's a slower paced, more deliberate game compared to something like, uh, I don't know, Armored Core, but the more considered and tactical parts of the game set it apart, and it's it's what grabbed our attention here. Being able to control not just one guy, but it, like an entire five-man squad of these big mechs is fun as hell, and the improved and streamlined controls for controllers uh, it actually makes it a lot easier to play without having to rely on a flight stick or a keyboard. Even if that is the ideal way to play these games, the controller is now actually a fine alternative. We were pretty impressed with how playing, we didn't have a problem with it. You can give your four allies commands by pressing up on the D-pad, and there's a pretty robust bust selection of options here. Even if all we're really doing is mostly just commanding them to attack our target or like, you know, telling them to defend an area. But there's also the battle grid, which allows you to get a top-down view of the area and issue commands that way, sort of like an RTS, or if we're going really far back, the original Ghost Recon. But, but between those two options, the game gives you a lot of tools to play tactically if you want to. But at least on normal difficulty, it's not like a insane requirement. If you want to pilot the biggest, 
beefiest mech possible and just rush into slugfest firing missiles and machine guns and just be a walking Metal Gear tank. Uh, that's usually more than enough, but if you want to be a commander with targeting lasers and additional scanning equipment and just really playing tactically and pretend as a commander, that's viable too, and it definitely gets stronger on the higher difficulties. The gameplay is mostly the same as the previous Mech Warrior, but what really makes it feel like something new is how much more interesting the campaign missions are, like we said at the start. They're longer and tend to have multiple steps with like a variety of objectives. Sometimes you have to play more stealthily or defend an objective or even battle a unique boss. Stuff that in any other series is pretty standard, but for a Mech Warrior game that's not Mech Assault, this stuff stands out in a, in a good way. They actually mix up the gameplay somewhat in this game by including missions where you're not just blowing up everything in an empty field. <laughs> Sometimes you're running recon for a larger force, Sometimes you're holding out ground for like a, a rescue mission. Sometimes you're sneaking around avoiding patrols and scanning structures for weak points. Missions often have optional routes or objectives to complete so you can resolve things in different ways. Or, or sometimes you just get to kind of roll in with a full assault group for maximum chaos. Just stuff exploding all over the place. Not every mission is a winner, like the stealth ones are just kind of dull, but at least there's no real punishment for getting caught. You just have to fight the guys who spot you. In general though, I appreciate that they're trying to make the actual missions you go on more engaging and interesting while still keeping in all the elements that make Mech Warrior games kind of different. The longer missions mean that there's a higher risk of running out of ammo or getting your gun arms destroyed or something, but the game thankfully mitigates some of that risk by doing things like putting in ammo caches that you can find mid-mission. Sometimes there are repair bays that you can access in a level, but even if there's not, the game is kind enough to let you take command of any of the mechs in your team at any time. So it's cool, you're never stuck in just a single mech. You can swap between five at any given time, which is great for when you want to mix things up or if you need a mech for a specific job like if, if you need to jump up somewhere but your chosen mech doesn't have a jump pack another helpful thing is that like if you end up dying like getting completely taken out it's not game over you can just switch to one of your remaining guys and continue the mission which is crazy helpful because there are times when you can just die almost out of nowhere like one bad shot from a big cannon and you're done the mech lab is very satisfying to screw around with once you get your head around how it all works. Keeping track of weapon types and ammo and heat sinks and hard points and weight limits can be confusing. And the way the mech lab really works isn't as user friendly as it could be, but it's not bad exactly. It's just a little fiddlier than it needs to be, but it's usable. It just can be a little less cluttered. One thing that we've noticed is that certain things like heat seem less important in the game, probably to make it a little more accessible. Uh, you know, in all these games, managing heat is vital. Energy weapons generate heat buildup, and if you overheat, then it used to be that your entire mech would shut down, kind of making you a sitting duck. But in this game, all it does is disable your weapons for a little while. You can still walk around, so overheating is much less punishing. Personally, I liked how brutal it used to be, but it's a choice I get. Having all options taken away from you like that could be pretty frustrating. The game looks great for the most part. Some of the environments in particular are really detailed and interesting. Another place where the game is also really just a step up from the previous game. But if there's one part of the presentation that we're not crazy about, it's actually how powerful some of the weapons feel, believe it or not. Rockets and machine guns and lasers all look pretty great, but the Gauss cannons just don't have the oomph that they used to. And taking out mechs just isn't quite as satisfying as it could be with that. You know, these things used to feel like mini nuclear explosions when they blew up. And now it's more of a weak little like, you know, pyro pop. And actually, uh, that's kind of a problem with the sound design in general. It doesn't feel quite as powerful as it should. It's not something that ruins the game or anything, but it's not the best. That and some of the voice acting. There are certain characters who sound great, but then there's some guys who sound like they just pulled some guy from the office into a sound booth and told him to do a funny accent. It's kind of old school, you know, it reminds me of the old games, but still, it's a little disappointing. The main guy isn't that great either. He's not terrible, but he does kind of just sound like some guy. Now, 
we've been praising the visuals and presentation, but part of that is because that we are playing the game on a pretty high-end PC. So in general, we didn't really experience any visual glitches. The one thing that we did notice, unfortunately, is stutter. We tried turning settings down, turning them up, changing the resolution, DLSS on and off. You know the drill by now. Nothing really quite helped. This game has that Unreal Engine 5 stutter that seems to be a problem with a lot of games lately, but here it is just very noticeable. Got to point it out. It seems like Steam reviews, a lot of people are facing the same frustrations at launch. So be aware. You can time to stuttering like clockwork. You know, anytime we approached an objective marker, the game would stutter. Anytime new enemies would appear or the state of the map would change, like if new parts of the level open up, the game would stutter. It's, I'm afraid to say, not great. And if our PC that's pretty damn powerful with the game installed on an SSD isn't enough to fix it, then, you know, this is gonna have a little bit of a rocky launch. I think the developers really need to work on this. It's up to them to fix it. I don't think it completely ruins or destroys the game, but I really hope they're quick with a patch to get all the stuttering under control because it's an annoying and persistent issue. Other than the stuttering, the game ran well. It's just that one big elephant in the room. So with all of that, we would absolutely recommend MechWarrior 5 Clans at this point, but you should probably hold off until the game gets a few patches to clear up some of the performance issues, especially if you're sensitive to that stuff. The stuttering could be quite annoying. The price tag also as well is something to be aware of. It's $50, it's not long, it's not short, probably like 25 hours or so to finish the campaign. It might feel a little overwhelming starting out, but the game generally does a decent job easing you into the action and the story, which sometimes feels like kind of a boilerplate war movie in space, but is still legitimately engaging and actually pretty well told. So it's a game with some flaws and some technical issues, but the good far outweighs the bad. But of course, that is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. We give you some pros, some cons, and our personal opinions. And now we wanna hear yours down in the comments. Let us know anything about your experience, your history with MechWarrior, anything at all down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you, what you're thinking of this game so far, maybe if you're having issues or not. Like we said, we're not hardcore MechWarrior people, but we're, we've at least played some of the games. So let us know where you're at. Either way, hopefully this video helped you out. Just just seeing the gameplay, maybe it informed your purchase or anything like that, clicking the like button does help us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Closing in on the target cavern. Target. Eyes up. Hostiles dropping in from high ground. They may be protecting the location of the prisoners. Eliminate all threats and scan for intel. anything vital.